you sitting comfortably? Oh, yes, yes. Then I'll begin. Even when you're just sitting around, we're rocking the talk. Today's News Talk Radio, TNT. Welcome back and joining us now is John Porter, the legend uh, from Chasing Descent. You can follow us, uh, follow him even uh, on ChasingDescent.com or on YouTube or on X. So make sure you go and do that. He's here to discuss rising crime rates and a knife fight that happened in broad daylight in Nottingham last week on Wednesday. Three men were seen wielding uh, big machetes. It was all captured on CCTV. No suspects found, of course. Uh, there were, uh, luckily, no injuries. Police urging people to come forward. Is it an isolated incident, John? Are these type of incidents happening everywhere? Or are we just only seeing it now because it's being covered on mainstream media? Well, probably yes to all of your questions, <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what's kind of what's happening with the world, doesn't it? Because, you know, if you think back to the 50s and 60s, there actually, there was nearly as much crime, if not more. And yet the perception of crime was a lot lower than it is now. Now we know everything. You know, if somebody, if somebody spills their tea down in London or, or over in Paris, we know about it and everybody reports on it. And, and you know, I, and I'm not I'm not castigating anyone here, but 24/7 news is partly to blame because if the news cycle's quiet, what are you going to report? You know, you you start delving into small and smaller um, events. Yeah. But but this this isn't an uh, an inconsequential event. This is probably an example of what's happening just now, in that we seem to have more and more of these types of people running about with these types of knives. And when I say these types of people. It's unfortunate, but the statistics show us that the majority of people that do this kind of crime are young, and unfortunately, they're they're black, and and that's an that's something that people don't like to touch on. But when you look at the the information and the data, that's kind of what's happening. And my personal view is, I think a lot has happened in the way that we police things these days, as well as a, a large influx of different cultural norms. And if you think about it, if, you, if you're if you from, you know, the Caribbean or from Middle Africa or whatever, a machete is an essential tool for life. And people, yes. people are used to carrying that kind of item. And that's not what we want. That's that's not what we want in this country, not what we expect. But you can't expect people to change their culture overnight. You have to, you know, do it gradually. I'm not being a left wokeist here. But the other thing is the police. And the police I think don't help the matter anymore because back in the eighties when I when I joined the police, we put twelve twelve cops out in a shift for a population of fifty, sixty thousand people. That was Irvine. Where the home of our ex dear leader comes from, Stur uh, Nicola Sturgeon. So we would be putting 12 co cops out on a shift. Six of them would be in cars, the rest would be walking. When was the last time, other than London, that you saw someone walking the beat? That's the problem. Because yeah. if you're not walking the beat, you're not contacting the people that live there. You're not talking to gangs of youths that are hanging about, because gangs of youths have always hung about, because they have nothing to do. And that's normal. When I was a kid, I hung about. But we ended up we ended up playing soldiers in the woods and things like that because, you know, it, it was the thing to do. Nowadays, kids either spend all their time in their bedroom or they run about in gangs. And yeah. the police don't contact them. The police don't have any knowledge of them. If that had happened somewhere like Nottingham, the local Bobby should be able to go, well, that's such and such and such and such, because their photos are on CCTV. They're there for everyone to see. So how can they not be identified? That's, mm. to me, it's a failing of the police. And we've seen this before, and it happened in New York. Remember when Giuliani took over New York? He did the, he, he, he went with a zero tolerance approach because New York was a cesspit, an absolute cesspit. And yet within three, four years, the place had turned around and it was safe to walk in. I remember going to New York in the 80s, the early 80s, and it, you didn't feel safe. But you went back in the, the late 80s or early 90s, and it was as safe as anywhere, probably safer than London. And yet zero tolerance works. 
And and we we even applied it locally um, when I was a cop as well because uh, Cowinning, which is a town just outside Irvine, was getting out of hand. And what had happened was the cops that were there had been there too long, and they were letting things slide. They were they knew you know there's a wealth of knowledge there. They knew everyone, but they let things drift. And then what happens is people start to take advantage. So they replaced all the cops. We went in zero tolerance. Bang bang bang. Fair but firm policing, you know, if somebody steps out of line, they got charged, they got done. You didn't give them a break. And then then you can start to take the foot off the gas a little bit because people will then start to know that if they step out of line, they're going to get hammered. If they don't step out of line, you know, everything's going to be fine. And when they step yes. out of line, you know, it, it, it some of the things that happened in Cowening were outrageous. It's you know. it's, it's hard to disagree with anything you've uh, said, John. And, uh, I, you know, all over social media, I saw that, you know, the crime is terrible. They obviously released the photos of the same day on mm -hmm. the 31st of January of the acid um, attack perpetrator. Um, it yeah. does seem deliberate because they're releasing only certain videos of certain individuals. It does then bring up a lot of uh, hatred and, and incites anger. Uh, but, of course, it's not really getting to the root of the problem. Them, as you said, that we don't have enough police on the streets. The same thing that you were saying about black individuals here in Reading. I know there are loads of white uh, youths here, mm. uh, but uh, as well. But of course, they will choose to highlight the ones that uh, that will be uh, possibly a, and the, the asylum seeker. They're not highlighting the cases of the youths that are white. Um, and really, what what we need to do moving forward, like you said. Uh, why aren't they putting the money into the police force? Why aren't there more patrols on the street? And instead, they can use the internet to highlight massive cases instead. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And the problem, though, is I think they are putting the money into the police force. But when cops are standing, taking videos in drive throughs telling you that you'll get six points if you use your phone when you're paying for your drive through you know, and, and when cops are out there making sure that people are wearing seatbelts and, oh, my God, you're in a traffic jam and you touched your phone. You know, let's get real people. What is the police? Is it there to protect you or is it a revenue gathering service for the, for, for the, for the government? Because that's what it seems to be more and more these days. It's not there to protect you. It's not there to help you. And it's not there to assist you in your everyday life. It's there to put problems in the way. I don't want people hassling me. I mean, what is the point? I can understand that using a telephone if you're moving is a bad thing, right? But yeah. what's what's the problem when you're stationary, regardless of the status of the car? If the car is stationary, whether it's in traffic or whether it's you know sit, sitting at a drive-through, what is the problem? What is the actual problem? Yeah, yeah, and people go, yeah, but you get them, you see them at the red lights. Well, you see police doing it as well. So the police yeah, obviously absolutely. think it's. The police obviously think about it, disregard it, and use it, right? But then they turn around and they do us for it. And these are the kind of these, and I know I did say about zero tolerance, but these are the kind of things that are easy for the police to do. They don't involve any real interaction. You know, it's bang, you did this, here's your ticket, take it up with the court. So it's yep. quick, Debrick. done, dusted. Sorry to interrupt, John. Have you got anything you wanted to add before we have to close it here? Rick. Yeah, just real brief. Uh, there was a there was a comment in the live chat to say you made a comment, John, about uh, pangas or machetes. Or they're called pangas in mm -hmm. Africa, but yeah. uh, you said you know they're fine for the jungles and the the, the bush, but uh, they're not exactly mm -hmm. fit for Surrey. That's what uh, Holly in the live mm -hmm. chat said. And someone else, just real briefly, as we uh, wrap this up, said, uh, "Why is this gentleman saying that? Unfortunately, most of these perpetrators are black. Would he be using the term unfortunately if they were white? Well, I would use the term unfortunately for black oh. or white." or Asian because it's yeah. it's it's sad that one demographic in particular is responsible for this and we need to be asking ourselves a question well why is that is there not something that could be done uh, to reduce this in this particular demographic so whether they're black white or Asian is neither mm -hmm. here nor there it's unfortunate no matter what skin color they are it's unfortunate that they're mostly perpetrated by one uh, racial group that's just statistics isn't it spot on Rick I mean that, that's exactly it. eight point seven percent of arrests are white people um, over thirty percent of arrests are people of colour. Okay, um, we have eighty-five percent in England. You still have eighty-five percent of a mainly white population, so more white people get arrested, but proportionally, only a third of them are committing the crimes. So, you know, that's but why I, it's, it's unfortunate. It's 
And I think it's also worth noting if you look at big council estates, particularly in London, where knife crime is, it is disproportionately full of the black community. And so that is also worth noting. So it's also mm -hmm. a class issue rather than just a black issue, yes. which some people yes. are trying to make it out. And that's what I was trying to say. Um, you know, if 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 those were all white and uh, all black people were in all the posh areas, I'm sure you'd see an absolutely different um, uh, statistic as well. And that's what we well, have to uh, point out here, which is which is uh, the truth rather than a manipulation or, or or a perspective on statistics. I've got to stop it. I'm afraid, John, we could go on. All right. Uh, but, um, <laughs> it's time to go. Uh, otherwise, I would love to carry on talking. And uh, we've got the headlines and we'll be back with Basil Valentine after the break here at TNP. Wow.